Hey guys, MTAS here, and I wanted to show you a fun little build. It's the dual element, dual blade build. Is it amazing? I don't know. Someone's going to come in the comments and tell me that this build is absolute shit, but I like it. I'm also going to show you two different armor sets if you want to use them. Uh, you know, that you can, you can really change it up however you want, but my biggest reason for using this is I find the weapon extremely potent against certain enemies. One of the reasons why is because of the ice element that's on it. So let's just jump right into it. The weapon I'm using is fire and ice. And it's pretty unique because not only does it have a very hefty ice element built into it, but it also has blast as well. Essentially, as you attack your target, you're going to build up a meter. Well, you won't see this meter, but you're going to build up a damage threshold. And once you proc it, pow, you're going to do a nice chunk of blast damage. And for the most part, both Blast and Ice are effective on almost everything. There's not a lot of things that are strong against Ice. I think it's the least resistance element in the game. So having an Ice weapon is always a good idea. The only thing that's slowing this down a little bit would be the sharpness of the weapon. But honestly, Blue is good enough for a lot of the enemies. And while you might uh, kind of bounce off of things like the horn of a Karin. Most enemies, you're going to be able to hit their body just fine. And against something like the Odegaron, I'm never going to pronounce this properly, it is fantastic. I didn't bounce once. I was able to smash through his HP bar very quickly with this build. And I loved it. So let's look at what we've got. We've got the Kusha Le Glare. The Kusha Le Glare has Ice Attack, which is going to boost my attack from 240 ice damage up to 300 and it's also got handicraft built into it is it necessary not necessarily but one cool thing that i was thinking about is instead of taking this attack charm i could take handicraft level three and i might actually be able to get white sharpness on this weapon which would be a pretty nice um you know boost to damage overall i just don't know if it's worth giving up the attack charm the reason why is this attack charm is giving me level 3 attack, and the Nergigante's coil is giving me an additional 2. When you have over level 4 attack, you get a bonus 5% affinity, and this is a pretty big boost to have. Xenogiva's claws, in my opinion, could be swapped out for a multitude of different things, but I like critical boost because this is a very critical focused build. I've got the Rathalos Mail for weakness exploit level 2. But optimally, you would actually want the beta version of the Rathalos Mail. That fire attack level 1 is not going to do anything, but I refuse to hunt another Rathalos gem uh, anytime soon. So I personally have the Rathalos Alpha Mail, but you would want the beta. 100%, there's no reason to use this one in this build. Rounding it out, I also have the Rathalos Greaves, which is fantastic because it gives me the critical ele element perk. But it also gives me that last little bit of weakness exploit, giving me all three tiers of it within this build. So, if you want to look at the overall build, we've got critical element, we've got attack boost level 5, a beautiful five at uh, 15 attack and 5% affinity. We've got the full 50% affinity when you're attacking a critical hit spot. This is amazing against Odegaron or Odegoron, whatever his name is, I don't care, <laughs> he's a red bloody dog. You're going to be critting on every single hit against this enemy, for the most part. We've got the ice attack from the helmet, which is bringing up my damage, as I said before. Jump Master is built in. Flinch Free is on the gloves. It's okay. It's not amazing. I've got a random gem for Divine Blessing. Stamage, uh, stamina Surge is a little bit of recovery on my Nergigante's coil. Handicraft on the helmet. Nothing huge. Critical Boost on the gloves. Pretty strong. Fire attack, nothing, and fire resistance, this is a random gem. Now I want to show you a little bit of footage as I absolutely melt a couple of enemies here. Oh wait, it's only one enemy, Odegaron, or whatever his stupid dog name is. The damage is unbelievable. Is it going to be this strong against every single enemy? No, but he is weak against the ice element, so I'm tearing through him. I love this build, I love the damage, I just feel like it's got that uniqueness to it, having the, you know, dual elements on a dual blade. One of the issues with this build is you're 
not the strongest in the defensive parts. Uh, you've got very negative dragon, very negative thunder, and without a proper gem, your overall fire resistance would be pretty bad too. Now, a couple small, small changes to the build. Really, is this better? Is it worse? It's tough to say. Uh, is swapping out a couple of the Rathalos pieces um, and the Kusha Ladora helmet for the Dragon King's eye patch and the Dauber Mail. Now, the nice thing about this is it opens up a couple of slots that allow me to get some um, gems in there to boost my ice damage through gems. It also is giving me slightly more base attack. Um, and, you know, you're, you're really not missing out on a lot here. Essentially, you're missing out on handicraft overall. But now I've got attack boost 7, weakness exploit. Ice attack 2 is coming from some gems. I've got a little bit more stamina surge because I actually have another gem that's placed into my Dragon King's eye patch. I've got pretty much all of the same perks. I got rid of that wasted fire perk. This build, in my opinion, might be even stronger. Some of the resistances are a little bit better. And, goddamn, do I look sexy. So, this is another build that I found uh, very effective when using fire and ice. Is it perfect? Is it the best? I don't know. I suck at this game. <laughs> I suck. I suck. But I wanted to share with you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed. And I'll see you soon, my friends.